Good day. Let's consider these two sentences. The first sentence, this is the player blank, sank the winning basket. The sentence number two, the athlete blank, I was thinking of, plays professional basketball. Now if I were to ask you whether to use a pronoun who or whom, which one would you choose for sentence one? and which one would you choose for sentence two? So I'd like to pause this video a bit and try to figure out whether to use who in the first sentence or whom in the first sentence or whether to use who or whom in the second sentence. If you look at the first sentence, this is the player who sang the winning basket, we need to use the pronoun who and not the pronoun whom. In the second sentence, the athlete whom I was thinking of plays ba professional basketball. In this case, we use whom. Now we would say, why would I use whom or who in who in sentence one and whom in sentence two? We're going to find out throughout the whole lesson how and when to use who and whom. And so the objective of this lesson. is for you to be able to use who and whom correctly. And the second objective is to use pronouns effectively and correctly in writing. Of course, this also applies to speaking as well. And so, the essential question for this test is how can you choose between who and whom? Number one. And two, how can you use pronounce properly, especially when you try to compare two things. So in terms of comparison and in terms of a positives when the pronouns are used as a positives. So these are the two main questions we're trying to answer throughout this lesson. So how or when can I use who and when can I use whom? The first thing we had to know was that who or whom changes depending on the function of who or whom in a sentence. There are three cases for who or whom to be used in a sentence. There's the nominative case. In this case, I use who. There's the objective case. In this case, I use whom. And the last one, there's the possessive case. Where I use whose. The first two, who and whom, become very problematic, especially in questions. So, for example, if I said who will take me to the symposium? In this case, it's best that you reorder the sentence, uh, the question, as if it's a, it's a sentence. In this case, you'll know whether who is used as nominative or it should be used as whom. For example, whom will you invite? 
and who here is in the of course the objective case objective case here but how they know whether I use whom or who in this case it's better to yeah, reword the question as if it's a sentence so I'm gonna just make it a declarative you will invite whom in this case if I look at the sentence I know that you is the subject and that's the verb and whom is the direct object therefore I have to use whom instead of who now that's great but what if who or whom is used in an adjective uh, clause or a noun clause remember the clauses chapter that a, a clause can be introduced by who or whom whether it's an adjective or noun clause one day I use who and one day I use whom if you have an adjective clause we're going to discuss it now so let's take this example Mr. Ali is the one who organized the trip right so uh, looking at the um, complex sentence here Masali is the one and who here is an adjective clause as if taken in the closest chapter who here functions as the subject within the clause as you already know that the complex sentence has two clauses the first one is Mr. Ali is the one this is the independent clause and this one is the dependent clause now the dependent clause has its own subject and a verb we have the verb organized this is the verb and that's the direct object and who is the subject in this case I use the nominative case of the pronoun who let's take another example the man whom we met in Paris will visit us soon so again this is a complex sentence where we have the independent clause the man will visit us soon and the dependent clause which is whom we met in Paris to know whether to use whom or who we have to isolate the close from the rest of the sentence which is in this case whom we met in Paris and look at the structure of this clause so we have whom and we have we met and in Paris let's look at the verb the first thing you have to look out for is the verb the verb is met who did the action it's we in this case we is a subject and whom did we meet we meet whom in this case whom is the object of the verb direct object in this case I use the objective case of the pronoun who it's very important that when you find who or whom to isolate the clues where the who and whom is found from the rest of the sentence and see how the who or whom functions in the same clause itself it doesn't matter whether you have a preposition before that I'm going to give you an example where the preposition before uh, the noun clause to give you an example on what I mean. I enjoy my time with whoever likes basketball
So again, let's look at the whole sentence. Uh, we have the I enjoy my time. This is the independent clause. And then you have the the prepositional phrase with with until the end. And whoever likes basketball is a noun clause functioning uh, as a whole as the object of preposition with. If you look within the clause itself and how it functions, you have the verb likes, this is the verb, and whoever is the, the subject of the verb likes because whoever is the performer of the action and basketball is the direct object of liking. So in this case I use whoever which is nominative case and not the objective case in this case. It doesn't matter whether you have a preposition before it because the object of this preposition is not whoever but the object is the whole clause by itself. So pay attention next time when you want to write or you want to know whether to use whoever or whomever in a noun clause that follows and a, a preposition. Let's take another example. I do not, sorry, I do not know who the captain of my team is. So, uh, you have I don't know and the noun clause who the captain of my team is. If you look at this, this clause itself, within this clause, you have the verb is, this is the verb, and the subject of the verb is captain. However, we use who but we don't use whom because who is in the form of predicate nominative which follows the linking verb. Now I know in this sentence it does not follow linking verb but it is in the uh, in the um, role of predicate nominative. So in this case we use the nominative case or the pronoun who. So another uh, here we have to, to pay attention to the verb itself. If it's a linking verb, then most probably you have to use who and not whom. Now let's look at this these two examples. Sue spends more time running with Jeff than I. The second sentence, Sue spends more time running with Jeff than me. Now both of these sentences are correct, but it all depends what you mean and convey in each one of these sentences. The first thing that strikes you the most about these two sentences is that they don't have the full other clause. Uh, the other clause which is then I, this is uh, an adverbial clause, but there's something missing in that clause. We have only I here, and we know that clauses should have a subject and a verb. Now why is that? Because, because this particular clause is elliptical. This is called elliptical clause. Elliptical clauses are clauses that we, uh, in this case, we delete some or a part of it or most of it for the sake of not repeating the words in the same sentence. Sometimes we delete the verb, sometimes we delete the subject, sometimes we even delete both of them. So in this case, the first sentence might mean Sue spends more time running with Jeff than I do. Okay? Or, of course, you can continue the whole sentence. Uh, Sue spends more time running with Jeff than I run, uh, and then I spend time running with Jeff. The second sentence, Sue spends more time running with Jeff than me, it might mean that Sue spends more time running with Jeff than she spends time running with me. 
So the sentence here, the clause should have been, then she spends time running with me. With me. So in these two cases, both of these sentences are correct. But the way it's used here, the first one is I, is in the nominative case because I intend that uh, I'm the performer of the action in the clause. The second one is me because I'm the direct object uh, or the object of this clause in this case. In this case, uh, spends time running with me. In this case, me here is the object of preposition. So, and in terms of vertical clauses, the first thing you have to do is that to, to figure out whether to use I or me, the nominative or the objective case, you have to complete the clause itself. And then only then you can figure out whether to use the objective case or nominative case. Now let's look at, at these two sentences. The first one, we or us sophomores raised $2,000. Second sentence, the principal thanked we or us volunteers. Which one do you think should you use? We or us in the first sentence, or we or us in the second sentence? Now, if you look at the first sentence, the subject of the sentence is sophomores. This is the subject. That's the verb. But the we or us here functions as an appositive. Telling who sophomores are. Now, since we or us is an appositive and signifying sophomores, and sophomores is in the place of subject, in this case it's nominative case, we need to use the nominative case of the pronoun we. In this case, we have to choose we and not us. In the second sentence, the principal thanked we or us volunteers. This is the subject. That's our verb. And that's the direct object. Volunteers. Now, since we is the positive here, that's the positive. Renaming volunteers, which is in this case direct object, therefore it's in the... Um, objective case then we need to use us objective case instead of we therefore in the first sentence we have to use we sophomores raised two thousand dollars and the second one the principal thanked us volunteers so a rule of thumb whenever the pronoun is used as in the positive look at the word it redefines or the word it refers to if the word it refers to is in the nominative case, in the, like in the first example, then we have to use the nominative case of the pronoun, in this case, we, or I, or he, or she. In the second example, if it refers to a word which is in the object case, then it functions as a direct object or an objective case, a pronoun. Here's the last example. The nominees, Rula and she or her, will give a speech at the next assembly. Right? So, we know that uh, Rula and she or her is, in this case, the non-essential appositive. So, non-essential appositive. But in this case, we have a compound non-essential appositive. We have Rula and she or her. And the appositive here refers to nominatinis, and we know nominees is a subject, therefore it's a nominative case. And in this case, we use she and not her. So she here is in the nominative case because it refers to nominees as Rola does. Here's a final one. Mr. Fadi sent one student, I or me, to the rally. What do you think? All right. So here, I or me, my is referring to student, and student here is direct object because it receives the action of sending. Therefore, I have to use me, which is the objective case.